when I was deciding upon what college I was going to go to back in my senior year, I decided I, I really needed to go as far away from home as I could. I needed to break free. So I chose Washington State for that reason. As far from my parents as I could get and still have in-state in tuition. Now, looking back, objectively speaking, my, my parents had done nothing to drive me away. You know, they fed me, they clothed me, they loved me, they sheltered me, uh, all for free. Um, occasionally said no to me, kept me in line, but nevertheless, my, my feeling at the time was that I needed to get out of that. I needed to break free from mom, dad, family, friends, church, start over. I want a new life. You know, really live uh, my own life. So I went off, uh, started university there, and that first semester away from home, I wasn't that happy. It's kind of difficult. And in fact, I had a serious though undiagnosed case of homesickness. He was this freedom loving guy, and, but deep down, I think what was going on was I missed home. So despite these newfound freedoms of mine, I, I've heard about this dad's weekend in the fall, every October or something. And I said, you know what? I think it'd be good for the old man to come out here and see my frat. Um, so I said, why don't you come over? You know, uh, there's a football game that weekend against Oregon. Uh, I can show you around. Um, like I was doing a favor or something. And I was never happier to see a man I'd moved across the, straight, the state to get away from than when he pulled up that Friday afternoon. And I could say, hey, good to see you, Dad. And I was thinking about that experience of homesickness uh, for my father and my home and my family because, you know, I think that that's the longing of a young man for the father is a symbol of the human condition. During my reversion to the faith, so I came back to the faith in the mid-80s <clears throat> because I really did leave the church when I went off to college. I really, I did. But when I came back, I had a what I call the Walker Percy phase. So Walker Percy was an American author. He's a, a Southern author from Louisiana. He was a convert to Catholicism. And so a doctor, psychologist, and so his novels are all about trying to get at the underlying sort of spiritual funk that we middle-class Americans are in. He was talking about late 20th century America, no different than us, probably worse. But I remember there's a passage in one of his novels and it's, uh, I think it's from the second coming, I could be wrong, but this, this man, Will Barrett, is going to his psychologist who's a friend. So they're friends as well as he's the doctor. And he comes in and, and the doctor asks, what's wrong, Willie? What's wrong? What's going on? And he says, I don't know, Scanlon. That's the doctor's name. I don't know. I'm homesick. How long have you been homesick? He says, all my life. So he's trying to, he's trying to figure out this feeling, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to him, but that's the best he can say. I've been homesick all my life. And that's, I think, the underlying undiagnosed condition that causes so many of our human ills and conditions and, and sins. That we're homesick, and we don't know even where that, what that means. We can't identify it because we don't associate God, the Trinity, with our home. That just doesn't compute. And yet, it's the truth. So sin, violence, self-destructive behaviors of all kinds. You know, when we try to put these infinite, this infinite desire for God into pouring that into these finite experiences, it usually goes wrong, at least it can. And we are left still with this, this sense of ur urging of something, a longing. Somehow, there's something wrong, doctor. When the truth is maybe we're just homesick for God because we're far away from him. We may have sought that life deliberately, like I did, as I said, you know, I, I want to leave home. And we do that to God, but sometimes we drift. We don't even know what we're doing. And yet we're, we end up far from God, as I, again, as I did from my human parents. It's not just a matter of our personal sins and decisions that leads to separation, although there's that. But again, there's something even deeper. Like again, Will Barrett, we've been homesick all our lives. And even then, when we do find Christ, some sense of, okay, who he is, 
as long as we still have these one foot in the world, one foot in Christ kind of lives, again, we still remain aliens and exiles, as Paul says. So this is Trinity Sunday, and I recall my freshman year case of homesickness because, again, I think that's the under, it's the core of the understanding of the spiritual life. The spiritual life is nothing more or less than an attempt to return to God, whom we may never have been with at the first place. But again, the idea of return is important. He's calling us. He wants us. And we have trouble identifying the call of God in our hearts. Again, that sense of, what is this homesickness? I, can't, I put other names to it. And it's not any old divinity or spiritual force that we're looking for. It's the Trinity whom we celebrate today. This is the most important doctrine of the church. God is one, but yet three, three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity that's also a community. In fact, we can say that this God who is love invites us into what we can think of his family of love, the Father, the Son, joined by a love so strong it's in a separate person, the Spirit. That's how St. Augustine recognized the Trinity. It's this family, this union, this loving dynamic that gave us this body, this community on earth and time of the church, which is the home, which is our home, where we'll be spiritually fed, where we'll find shelter, and sometimes we'll be told no to keep us from going off the rails. So the Father who created us sent his Son into the world to save us from the emptiness of our self-imposed exile. So this is, the, this is the story of salvation history. That we turned away, we ran away from the Father. This is the fall. And then he goes out and gets us. When we don't even really know that we're homesick, but we think it'd be kind of cool if Dad would visit us. And so he, he sends his son into time and into space and into death to retrieve us and call us home. So if we feel vaguely unwell, feel that things aren't as they should be or that we're not who we should be, Maybe a question to ask is, is that simply that underlying, always present homesickness for our home in God that we have not attended to? Now, the good news of Jesus Christ is that this homesickness can be cured. We can go home. We can go where we're supposed to be. We can fit into the spot God's made for us. That snug, cozy spot that created was created by God. So, you know, even after my father, he visited me for dad's weekend, he had a good weekend, and then he left, and I was still in Pullman, still far away from home, but the weekend did, it was a turning point for me, in a sense I knew that now there's a different possibility of my family. I, got, I identified, I, I actually, by the end of the weekend, I said, you know what, I kind of think I am homesick. This radical, mature, 18-year-old guy. Um, yeah, I guess I am kind of homesick for mom and dad who love me and actually who I love. And by the end of the year, I decided to return to Seattle and complete my degree at the University of Washington. Now, I'm not suggesting by this that Pullman and Washington State are literally the state of sin and the UW and Huskies are heaven. I'm not trying to go down that route. I like both my schools, so that's fine. Um, it's an analogy. But... This decision to come home was driven by many factors, including the fact that I had a job on Mercer Island at the Safeway store, but it was a possibility because I had found out that my father and my family, my home was not some place to escape from, but was a blessing to return to. And so the idea of coming home was not a sense of failure or something that was gonna lock me out of freedom or my maturity, but it was something that was fitting. Didn't mean I had to move into the house, but I would be around. I'd come home. And a part of me still is homesick. And, and always will be this side of heaven. But now at least I know where home is, or who home is. As I told you before, I left God well to the side as well as my human mom and dad. But I came back eventually to this community itself in the mid-80s, about five years later. A few days, I came back to the church, and I can now identify this yearning that remains in me, not as a call to wander farther from home, but simply as my own deep longing and need for the Trinity. It's still not perfected, because I'm not. 
this community of persons that I'm part of is calling me. And this is the most basic lesson that, have, that we have to learn in life. That we have a home and we're far from it and we're homesick and that's why we don't wreck your life by trying to find a false answer to that problem, which is simply go home to God. The most basic cure for the, what ails us, to return to God, to return to the Trinity, to go home. 